Welcome to Mikon's hardware. The year 2023 is about to end, but LGA 2011 version 3 platform is still popular. And this is all thanks to the prices. Lately, prices for Chinese X99 motherboards as well as Intel Xeon E5 V3 V4 CPUs come down significantly, and that's why the platform is still very attractive for those who have very tight budget. You can assemble office computer, workstation, and of course a gaming computer based on X99 motherboard with a Xeon E5 V3 or V4 CPU. One of the unique features of the LJ2011 version 3 platform and Xeon E5 V3 CPUs is the Turbo Boost Unlock Exploit or Bug. This subject has already been explored and explained multiple times and only on my channel you can find several videos, but because people keep asking me the same and also new questions, also because the unlocking procedure has evolved since the beginning, I have decided to make this hopefully one final video where I will collect all the important and not very important information. After watching this video, you will understand what is Turbo Boost Unlock, how it works and what doesn't work, when to apply it and how to apply it, but also I will explain how to troubleshoot the most common errors. But first I would like to say thank you for everyone who keeps supporting me during these hard times. YouTube does not like when I mention Moscow invasion of Ukraine, but I still follow the situation, I still have friends and family in Ukraine who are living there, who are volunteering in Ukraine and who are fighting at the front lines. Of course, I still follow the situation and of course I keep doing everything I could do to reduce the number of Russians on Ukrainian soil. So thank you everyone who supports me, who supports Ukraine, please keep doing so. And with this, let's go to the Turbo Boost Unlock subject. First, I need to bring up the boring warning. Everything you do with your hardware is your own responsibility. I'm only telling you what can be done, but if you will be able to do it or not is not my responsibility and I cannot guarantee anything. Chinese manufacturers are constantly updating their motherboards and even if you do exactly the same steps with a motherboard that looks just like mine, it does not guarantee that you will achieve the same results. So, please be careful and please understand that any manipulation with BIOS may lead to a bricked motherboard. Now, what is Turbo Boost Unlock? Some people don't quite understand what it is, but in reality it is just a simple exploit of a bug or a feature of Intel Xeon E5 V3 CPUs. Unfortunately, this bug was fixed by Intel in V4 CPUs, so we can only exploit E5 V3 CPUs with a locked multiplier. This bug was discovered by some smart people who understand Intel CPU architecture and they figured out that with a certain codes or with a certain microcodes it is possible to force all CPU cores to boost to the maximum CPU clock frequency. So all Intel CPUs they have base clock frequency and max turbo frequency. By design only one or two CPU cores can work at the same time at the max turbo frequency. But with the Turbo Boost Unlock exploit, all CPU cores can clock to the maximum turbo frequency. Unfortunately, every CPU also has a TDP limitation, which is enforcing how much electricity a CPU can consume. Once CPU starts to consume more than allowed amount of electricity, it will start to downclock itself even with the Turbo Boost Unlock bug. And here we can get some help from undervolting, but sometimes you might also need to disable a few CPU cores to be able to achieve high clock frequency on the rest of the CPU cores. Undervolting with the Xeon E5 V3 CPUs after Turbo Boost Unlock also works differently, some could even say that it works opposite compared to the normal behavior. So normally when you undervolt a CPU, you assume that the CPU will consume less electricity, means it will produce less heat and it means that it will load the VRM or the power delivery system of the motherboard less than without undervolting. Unfortunately or fortunately it's not exactly the case with the Xeon E5 V3 CPUs after Turbo Boost Unlock. So CPU has a TDP limitation, let's say E5 2697 V3 145 watts, and by default with the Turbo Boost Unlock under heavy load CPU will keep its frequency at about 2.8-2.9 GHz. Now we reduce the voltage or undervolt the CPU by 70 mV and then apply the same load. This time the CPU will clock itself to about 3.3-3.4 GHz. Still the power consumption remains the same. And the result is that the power consumption is the same, voltage reduced and that means that the electrical current has increased. 
With increased electrical current, we apply extra load onto the VRAM, and with the Chinese motherboards that have rather poor quality VRAM, it means that the efficiency decreases. And with the decreased efficiency, the VRAM consumes even more power to produce the same output, and that means that the VRAM heats up even more. And that means you need even better and even stronger cooling for the VRAM to keep it cool under the Turbo Boost unlocked condition, even though the CPU consumes exactly the same amount of power compared to the situation when Turbo Boost unlock is not applied. A few words about the dual socket solutions. I don't know why, but people keep asking me to recommend them a good solid dual socket motherboard. So if you're in that situation that you don't understand or don't know if you shall go single socket or dual socket solution, most likely you need to go single socket solution. Dual socket solutions are pretty bad for average consumers and especially for gamers. So games are very sensitive to the latency and when you have two CPUs, the CPUs need to talk to each other and also one CPU access and memory of the another CPU or the other CPU access and memory of the first CPU, this all increases the latency and the gaming performance is usually worse compared to just one CPU. Still, if you badly want a dual socket motherboard, then I can recommend you to pick up a used Dell T7810 workstation from eBay. But if you want something from AliExpress, then Huanan GX99 FADD or FAD Plus are the only options that I can somehow recommend. All other motherboards I simply do not recommend. Turbo Boost Unlock also works slightly different with the dual socket motherboards. So far, the only working solution is to inject uh, the Turbo Boost Unlock FFS driver into the DXE region of the BIOS, and that means that the sleep mode will not work after Turbo Boost Unlock. Okay, now let's talk about BIOS modification, how to actually inject Turbo Boost Unlock into your X99 BIOS. The first and the simplest option is my Mi 899 application. There I have a whole bunch of different BIOS options for different motherboards with a different voltage reduction. The Mi 899 application on its own doesn't do anything, it's just a convenient UI to pick your motherboard, pick BIOS and flash it. Unfortunately, I do not have the capacity to buy every possible Chinese motherboard, check it and update Mi 899 with BIOS options for that motherboard. So it's likely that you will not find some of the latest motherboards in Mi 899. And in that case, you may take a look at Ultimate Patcher 2. Ultimate Patcher tool, unlike Mi 899, is actually modifying your BIOS. So if you have a dump of your BIOS, you can use Ultimate Patcher tool to mod this BIOS and achieve Turbo Boost Unlock. Unfortunately, it only properly works with BIOS from motherboards with a real X99 or a C612 chipset. Even though sometimes you can feed the Ultimate Patcher tool with the BIOS from Q87 motherboard or B85 motherboard, the result is a non-functional BIOS, and if you try to use it with your motherboard, most likely the motherboard will break. Overall, the Ultimate Pusher tool is the best application because it can unlock overclocking, it can fix a sleep mode and smart fun issues. Also, if you apply Turbo Boost Unlock, the overclocking menu can be used to dynamically adjust CPU voltage. That means that you do not need to reflash your BIOS if you want to choose another voltage for your CPU. At the same time, I cannot recommend this application for everyone because it simply doesn't work properly with BIOS from motherboards with a desktop chipset such as B85, Q87 or Z87. And if you have one of those motherboards, then the only option to unlock Turbo Boost is to modify the BIOS with your own hands. The latest addition to this scene is the S3 Turbo Tool application. Unfortunately, the application has only pathetic UI in Moscow language, so it is pretty hard to use it. The good thing is that we don't really need the application for anything except FFS drivers generation. I have prepared multiple different FFS drivers and uploaded to my Microsoft OneDrive for you to freely download. I also provide there all the needed software to mod your BIOS. Detailed step-by-step -step instruction with multiple screenshots is available on my website, but if it's still something not clear for you, then feel free to join my Discord and ask for some help. After Turbo Boost Unlocked BIOS is ready, you need to somehow flush it onto your motherboard. Most of the Chinese X99 motherboards are unlocked and you can flush the motherboard BIOS with an application called FPT or AFU. Both of these applications are available as a DOS executable or Windows executable. Sometimes on Chinese motherboards, the BIOS is locked for write, 
but you can unlock it in the BIOS settings. And for that you need to go to Intel RC Setup, PCH Configuration, Security Configuration, BIOS Lock. So disable this BIOS Lock, save changes, reboot, and then you will be able to flush your BIOS. If you have a branded motherboard from Asus MSI or something, most likely you will not be able to flush a modified BIOS, and in that case you will need an external flash programmer, for example a CH341A. A detailed guide how to use such a programmer you can also find on my channel. Here I will only mention that it is important to buy the updated version of the programmer that has voltage switch. The new version looks rather ugly, but this voltage switch is very important because the first version uses 5 volts and that may sometimes kill your BIOS chip. The updated version has a voltage range from 1.8 to 5.0 volts, which is rather nice. In certain unlucky cases you may have a motherboard with such a schematic that it is not possible to read or write the BIOS with a clip. In that case the only option is to desolder BIOS chip from the motherboard, read it, write it and then solder it back. It's very annoying but it is what it is and I cannot help with it. It's also important to mention that if you're flushing a completely different BIOS, for example BIOS from iEngineer for Huanangri or Machinist motherboards, then it is really needed to be flushed with a CH341A or any other programmer. And that's because the FPT and AFU applications do not write every possible register. And if the two BIOS are very different, then it may result that your motherboard will be bricked or the motherboard will boot into recovery mode. The most common turbo boost unlock issue among my subscribers is when people forget to apply the CPU C state configuration. So after you flush modified BIOS, it is important to go back into the BIOS, restore BIOS defaults, save changes and reboot. Additionally, you can go into the CPU C state configuration and ensure that the values are actually applied and saved. If the CPU C states are misconfigured with the turbo boost unlock, your system will lock at startup. Another very common issue is related to undervolting. If the CPU voltage is reduced too much, the system won't be stable. Sometimes the system becomes so unstable that it is dangerous to flash another BIOS. For example, the system may lock up just right after boot, or after a few seconds, or after a minute or two. For this situation I made a detailed video as well, but in short you need to go into the BIOS, disable Turbo Boost and force your CPU to operate at the base clock frequency, boot into the system and after that flush the BIOS with the better suited voltage for your CPU. Sometimes people also ask me why the motherboard is booting into the BIOS recovery mode. Well, the answer is pretty simple. The BIOS you flushed is not compatible with your motherboard or it was flushed with the FPT AFOWIN application instead of the flash programmer. In this case, the only way to fix your motherboard is to flush back the compatible BIOS. And finally, some of the Chinese motherboards come with a post card or post indicator that can help debug some issues. On my website you will find a page where I have collected the most known codes for Huanangji, Klisre and other motherboards. I have also added there a couple of external links where you can find postcodes for different motherboards and different manufacturers. A few answers for the most common questions. The first question, what happens when CPU is replaced? Well, that really depends on what kind of Turbo Boost unlock you have implemented. If you have injected FFS drivers right into the BIOS, then this driver is going to stay within your BIOS until you flush another BIOS. Clearing CMOS will not help restore your original BIOS. Another popular question is about resizable bar. Is it possible to apply both resizable bar modification and turbo boost unlock? Of course it is possible to do so because these two are totally different and separate modifications. You can apply these modifications one at a time or both together. There are no restrictions. Another very annoying yet very frequent question sounds like this. I have a motherboard X, what device can you recommend me? So first of all, even if you have a motherboard that looks just like mine, it does not guarantee that my bias is going to work with your motherboard. Chinese manufacturers are constantly updating the motherboards and changing components on the motherboard, so I can provide no guarantee. But in general, if you have a motherboard which is kind of the same and they have kind of the same chipset, the bias shall be interchangeable. 
So for example, I have bias for Machinist 699 RS9 with the chipset B85, but yours has chipset Q87. Most likely in this case, my bias is going to be compatible with your motherboard. But if you have a motherboard with a chipset X99, BIOS from B85 motherboard will definitely not work. On the other hand, a BIOS from C612 motherboard will work or most likely will work with a motherboard that has X99 chipset. My system randomly locks, what shall I do? This is another very frequent yet very annoying question because there is no simple answer. System may lock for many different reasons, but what I can recommend is that you always need to test your computer with a stock configuration. If your system locks without you modifying the bias, then most likely there is a hardware error. And with the Chinese X99 motherboards, when computer misbehave, most likely the culprit is the motherboard. It is sad, but in this case there is nothing I can do. If your motherboard has hardware errors, BIOS updates or software updates will not help solving it. You have to either replace the motherboard or physically bring it to a workshop to figure out what's wrong with it and fix it. The last question is again about the V4 CPUs. Even though I have already answered it multiple times, people keep asking me. So if you have a system with a Xeon E5 V3 CPU and Turbo Boost unlocked BIOS, you can upgrade to the V4 Xeons, but first you need to revert your BIOS to non-Turbo Boost unlocked version. Xeon E5 V4 CPUs most likely will not boot if your system has Turbo Boost unlocked BIOS. I hope this is pretty clear and I hope I won't have to answer this question again. With this I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was clear and helpful. Bye for now.